So in the last video, we went over basic data types. In this video, I'm gonna be going over operators, how to use them and what they are in Kotlin. So let's get started immediately by going to our function main and I'm just gonna copy and paste in this block of code I prepared. And the first thing to check out is that I created a value of first number and a value of second number, one with the value of 15.5 as a float and a 3.5 as a float. Then I created three texts, which one is named beginning, one is named middle and one is named end. And the first kind of operators we're gonna go over are arithmetic operators. And that means the plus symbol, the minus, the asterisk, or the multiplication symbol. Or, and we've got the division operator and the modulus operator. And here I just created five print line statements that all kind of show you what they do. So the first one's gonna say first number plus second number. So it's gonna get these two numbers without adding them because it's a text value here and it's gonna equal the first number plus the second number. So essentially the plus adds, the minus subtracts, the multiplication operator multiplies, the division one divides, and the only one that will need some actual explanation is the modulus operator. Well, let's just run this so I can show you real quick what's going on here. So as you can see, the first uh, print line statement is going to print all the operators you have here. And then it's gonna get the numbers, first number plus second number without adding them because I didn't add the brackets and it will add them here because I did add these brackets. So everything inside here becomes a statement rather than a concatenation of string and values. So you'll get the result of each one. And now here, as you can see the modulus operator, I just wanna explain that real quick, what a modulus operator does it will give you the remainder, what it couldn't divide. So it tries to divide as many times as it can into 15.5 and it ends up with 1.5 because that's what's remaining. And to explain this a bit better, let's just divide it by, let's do three by seven. And the answer should be one because you three goes into seven two times with a remainder of one. And that's how the modulus operator works, as you can see there. And the final thing I need to show you here with arithmetic operators is that you can concatenate string, which means if you have one text and another text or a third text, you can add that in a print line statement or anywhere you want just by adding a plus symbol and it will add those strings together. You cannot subtract them or divide them because that doesn't really make any sense. But uh, yeah, those are the options you have with arithmetic operators. So they work just as normal mathematic operators in real life. But let's get rid of all of that because that was as simple as that. Next up, we have assignment operators. So what I did here is I started by creating a variable of total and I initialized it with zero. And then I'll show you real quick what this means. But as you can see, you see plus equals, minus equals, times equals. And what this means is if you do total, uh, let's make that lowercase, total equals total plus five. That is exactly the same as writing total plus equals five. And that's gonna output five because total is zero, but let's get rid of that. And here you've got total equals total minus three. So you're gonna get the output of two. Then you've got total equals total times 25. So two times 25 is gonna equal 50. Then you've got total equals total divided by five. And that's gonna output 10 because five divided by 50 equals 10. And then here you've got with a modulus of three, you'll get an output of one for the modulus operator. But I'm just gonna click play so you can see all of that happening in real time. So you see five, two, 50, 10, and one. And it's just a neat way to simplify an expression to assign to our value or to update the value. And that's all that there is to assignment operators. So let's remove that bit of code. Next, we have something called unary prefix and increment and decrement operators. So the first thing to know is that a unary prefix is a plus symbol or a minus symbol or whatever goes in front of the numbers, which I believe are only plus and minus symbols at the moment. And there's also the exclamation mark that can go in front of a boolean that's also known as a unary operator. So if you do var total equals 25 plus minus 30, you're gonna get minus five. You can also add a plus here, although that is completely unnecessary because we already know it's positive. And then you've got increments. So if you add two pluses or two minuses, you'll either dic increment or decrement the value. So plus plus makes the total go up by one. So from minus five, it's gonna to go to minus four. And if you do the minus minus, it's gonna go minus five again. And there's one important thing I need to state is that if you were to add the plus plus at the end of the value, 
instead of at the beginning, it will increment it after the print line statement. So you will not see the result when I print this statement, but you will see it the next time it gets printed. And I'm just gonna play this to make sure I can get the idea across a bit better. So as you can see here, I printed plus plus, which means it should have been minus four. But since I added the plus at the end, it did not update it yet. The value did get updated, but after this print line statement went through. But the next time I actually showed the value, it showed the updated value. So this just updates the total after. And finally, there's one more, which is the exclamation mark I wanted to talk about earlier. So if you create a Boolean, such as variable is working and initialize it with false, then you can write if it is not working, which means since it's false, it means it's not working, then it will say something doesn't work. And it's just something nice you can add in front of uh, Boolean statements to make it very fast to check if something is not something. And yeah, that's all there is to it. You'll see it says something doesn't work because something doesn't work is indeed false. Well, let's get rid of all of that again. And next we have comparison operators. And this might look like a lot, but it's very straightforward, I promise. So the first thing we did is create a few variables. One is called number with the value of 10. One is bigger number with the value of 12. And finally, I added a random number to spice things up a bit. So it's gonna pick a random number between one to 20, 20 inclusive. And then we've got a lot of if statements here. So essentially what comparison and equality operators are, are these uh, symbols right here, the more than, the less than, the more than or equal to, the less than or equal to, the is equal to, the is not equal to. And then you've also got these special ones, which is the and and the or operators. So the first one checks if this number is bigger than this number, which is gonna be false. And this one checks if it's less, which means it's gonna be true. This is gonna check if it's more than or equal to, which is essentially the same as this at the moment, but uh, it is not equal to, and it is not more than, so it's still gonna print false. This is still less than or equal to. If the numbers were the same, it would still print. And this is true because number 10 is still smaller than bigger number. Then this one you have if number is equal to bigger number, which is false because 10 is not equal to 12. And do not confuse this with the assignment operator because the assignment operator creates the value. It essentially initializes the value and assigns a new value. So you cannot use this for checking. This checks if the numbers are the same. So these are not the same, so this will not print. And then you've got if number is not equal to bigger number, then it will print because number 10 is not equal to number 12. And for these final two, we've got the AND operator and the OR operator. But uh, let's start with the AND operator. So what it's checking is if these two statements are true, they both have to be true for this print line to be executed. So number is less than bigger number, which is true. And number that is less than random number, we still have no clue yet because the random has not generated a number for us yet. So we have no way to tell. So this might get executed or it might not. We have no clue yet. And that's what the AND is for, for multiple statements. And you can actually have many of these. You can do another one after that as well. But uh, for this video, I'm just going to use one. And finally, we've got the OR operator. And this checks whether number is less than the bigger number or the number is more than the big number. So if any one of these two statements are true, it's going to print this line. And this is a very useless statement because number is always gonna be either bigger or less than bigger number. I mean, I guess the only exception can be if number is equal to bigger number, but that's never gonna happen. So preferably you'll have this or statement when you want one of two conditions to be true for this to print. All right, and finally we have the in operator. So to get this started, I created a var named numbers and I initialized it as a list of one, three, 10, 20. And then we had another declared variable, which is random number, which gets that one to 20 and uh, picks a random number from it. And then I wrote if random number is in numbers, that's the new operator I'm introducing here. So if one of these random numbers is found in this list, it's gonna print this statement. Otherwise, it's gonna say the random number is not in the list of numbers. So if we click play, we'll find out whether that random number is in the numbers. And I don't know what number it picked, but that number was not in the list. So it will not print the first statement, but it will print the second statement. 
You can also do the opposite, which says if random number is not in numbers, the random number is not in the list of numbers, it will print that statement. And that's just a quick way to add the negation to an in operator. And that's all you need to know about operators for now. In the next video, I'll be going over how to convert types such as an int to a long or a string to an int, so you can actually change values depending on your needs. But uh, I'll see you in the next video.